The death toll is rising as massive amounts of rain from Hurricane Harvey continue to flood Houston and other parts of Texas and Louisiana. Almost all of the city neighborhoods were impacted by the flooding. 55 inches of rain over two days. You know, we get 52 inches of rain over a year. Houston is flat. It's only like 55 feet above sea level. Uh, and we don't have the best drainage system. We have neighborhoods that were affected by overflowing reservoirs. We had neighborhoods that were affected by overflowing bayous. And then we also had neighborhoods that were affected when the city decided to open dams and release water from these bayous. And that water filled up neighborhoods also. It was almost like a water wheel. Part of that storm was in the Gulf and the other part was on land. And as it turned, it was just kicking water off the Gulf right onto the land. Finally, it came to Port Arthur, Texas. Thousands of people lost their homes. Harvey exacerbated and compounded the inequality that existed before the storm. When it comes to environmental impacts, nobody has been impacted more than people of color because we were the ones traditionally and historically placed in areas that were deemed unsafe to live next to the wastewater treatment facilities, next to the refineries, next to the chemical plants, intentionally placed there. You're talking about flooding plus the pollution and the emissions from shutdown, startup of these refineries, these chemical plants. The neighborhoods that have the higher tax property values, they tend to get the assistance faster and first. So it is up to you to get up and take steps towards your recovery. When the hurricane first hit my neighborhood, I'm on Facebook and I started noticing that a lot of calls for rescue were coming from my zip code. And I noticed no one's going to help. No one's coming to this side of town. Now, this is the south side of Houston. It's a predominantly black neighborhood. And so as I sit there, I mean for hours, and I realize, you know, okay, nothing's happening. People aren't being rescued. When rescuers would get on and talk about going to the south side, Someone else would hop on and say things like, um, are, you, are you armed? Do you have a gun? Um, what are your assets? Are you, and so to me, that immediately ticked the box for me. Like, oh, this is coded language for danger. Like, a coded way to say, like, hey, don't go over there. My operation cleared 75 families. We went back out to help them clean their homes out then after the fact. And then we were doing food, working with Food Not Bombs, packaging up tons and tons of meals and driving them down into these neighborhoods. It's kind of one of those things where it wasn't like, you know, we sat down and we had this meeting and we decided this is what we we're gonna do. By the time we sat down with one another, it was like, all right, guess we're doing this. <laughs> many of low-income families and working-class families don't have flood insurance. And in many cases, don't even have homeowner's insurance because of racial redlining, where many insurance companies don't insure families in neighborhoods that they consider high risk. It's in upwards of thousands of people that are still displaced. I myself, still living in a mobile home right now. These people have just mucked their house. Like, the storm was eight months ago. And also, I think that these for sale signs and the we buy houses for cash signs are important, too. There's weird speculative stuff that's going on. There has to be a just recovery and equitable treatment. The communities that are most impacted, have them in the room talking about what kinds of plans are needed, talking about how we're going to build our infrastructure, from our housing to our businesses to our transportation systems, all of that roads and bridges built in a way that allow us to keep our natural areas that absorb the rain as opposed to allowing developers to build in those areas. We work in solidarity with communities. So it is up to you to take steps towards your recovery and to help your neighbors that need assistance. And then you start to find the genius that exists within your own community. I think it is a government's worst nightmare because when people start to realize that they don't need your scraps to function and that they could create something far better than what you've been giving them, if they just work together and work on their own, I think that that, to me, it's a much more gratifying uh, recovery.